you see the papers, TV, full of so-called news, telling us there's too many old people to be taken care of and the government can't afford it. Not enough care homes, not enough staff. So what's new then, eh? I never thought I would live in a place like this when I grew old. I suppose I thought, thought somehow I would stay independent. It's all right here. Laundry gets done after a fashion. Food's not too bad. Better than a lot of blokes have to put up with. I've got my own room on the ground floor with a view from the window. But it's hot in here. I'd like it a bit cooler. Typical bloody hospital. Some of the residents get to maintain the gardens. Not me though. Somehow they never ask me. Can't see why not. I watch them, poor buggers. Kneeling down, scratching at the borders, the staff all in white, supervising. No spades, no forks, no rakes, just plastic trowels. No bloody use at all. What use is that, I ask you? I spent years here in a trance-like state. They give me a load of pills. I always spit them out now. I found a method of hiding them under me tongue. Pills make you drowsy and tired. I used to be a man with energy and drive. I can't see no benefit to older folk having so much medication, always having injections and medicine. Does you no bloody good at all to my way of thinking? When I was a young man, I lived in County Durham. First of all, in a place called Easington. I was a miner then, working underground. Hard work, dangerous and all. The seams went out under the sea, a strange thing altogether. Never was a place to make money. I left there to work in Yorkshire for better pay. Barnsley was where I worked next, and where Agnes and I got wed. Both our children were born there. It all came to an end in the 1980s. I saw it coming, left before the finish. Coal mining was never going to be the same again. We moved to Sheffield and I had a job in what was left of the steel industry. Just as dangerous, just as hard work. When that died of death I took a package as it's called. Paid off the mortgage, did some fiddle jobs after that. I had time to keep the garden tidy at last and got out for a pint now and then. Didn't suit her though, moving away from her mother she had to. As if Sheffield were a hundred miles from Barnsley instead of just fifteen. She weren't pleased that I was at home more either. You're irritating, she'd say. You should get a hobby. She never stopped complaining. You're an irritating man, that's what she'd say. Trouble was, the kids had left home as soon as they could. She was at the loose end. You should get another job, she'd say. Well, I will if you will, innit? Eh? It was her that found the hobby though. I knew nought about it. Not at the start any road. Going to bingo with her friends, she said. Lion cow. Then I found that the bingo in Attercliffe had closed down six months before. I caught them out one Friday. I came home early from the club to find her and her bloke together in what's called a compromising position. She came at me waving her arms and screaming, so I gave her a clout. Then he came at me shouting as if it were my fault. I gave him a thump and all. He lay twitching on the floor. She ran off screaming with blood running down her face. A fine to do. I've got no recollection as to what happened next. I knew I was in hospital. What for, I don't recall. I had some sort of a breakdown, they told me. All three of us were charged with violent disorder, but it came to out. They got nominal found, fines and bound over to keep the peace. I was unfit to plead, they said. My son arranged things so that the house was sold off. My share evaporated somehow in legal fees. I never did go back to work, and the wife didn't get another hobby by all accounts. The boyfriend, now he took a fit and died a year later. Shame that. The Yorkshire Constabulary tried to have me blamed for his death, but it was too late. The magistrate found no case to answer, but they recommended that I be found secure accommodation with suitable care. So that's how I came to be here. It's a strange place, an odd mixture. 
Some of it's very secure, not against assault from the outside, but to keep patients locked up. It's still a hospital, of course, which is why I'm here. I'm in the bit that's an old people's home to all intents and purposes. It's in rural Nottinghamshire, all very nice, milder weather than Tyneside, of course. That's what has irritated a lot of people here, is a ban on smoking. There's no smoking anywhere, indoors or out. A bit hard for the lifelong smokers like me. And bear in mind, there's no alcohol at all. They never stop telling you about the expense of this place. So find me somewhere else, I say. One morning, a doctor came to see me. I know this man, he's smart, he's from Yorkshire. He puts on the accent to fool me, but it doesn't work. The news is good, he says to me. There's nothing the matter with thee. You could survive perfectly well away from here. That would save a lot of money. I said now that I just put on me catatonic act. It fools everybody, but not him. So I'm on my way out. Apparently. No home to go to, no family, no money to live off. I've been promised a resettlement package, whatever that is. I'm to be relocated to sheltered accommodation with self-service laundry and cooking my own food. Now that is not what I've been used to at all. I'm too old for all of that. I expect it'll be full of old women. These places mostly are. I'm to have supervision, they say. No longer a danger to the public, they say. Well, we'll see about that. See, the thing about these big dressing gowns is they're good for hiding things, aye? And not just fag packets, neither. Do me own bloody laundry? Not bloody likely. <laughs>